the contest we have ahead of us here, Frederick, uh, how many, tell us a little bit about it. How many teams are there? What will they be doing? Well, uh, there will be 112 teams, hopefully. That's how many are supposed to be here. Um, and that's a record number, isn't it? Yes, every year is a record number. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, also this year. How, how, how do you make it to the world finals? Well, so all the teams present here are either winners of regional or one, one of the top finishers. So you would have to finish in the top one, two or three of some of the regional contests all over the world. And I heard a number that over 2,000 universities in over 80 countries are actually participating in this contest. That, that, is, that is true. Uh, and it's something like three or 400,000 people mm -hmm. uh, involved in at some point during the qualification process. Yep. And here today we have the 112 best three-person teams who will compete for the title of world champion. We have some footage to show of uh, Warsaw and Poland and... Uh, so that our um, so that our viewers can see a little bit of what's been going on. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's try to do that. Poland lies in the very heart of Europe a beautiful and culturally rich land where the East connects with the West of the continent. This is where Europe's first and the world's second constitution was proclaimed and where Frederick Chopin composed his mazurkas and poloneses. Today Poland is a modern, dynamically developing country with a turbulent thousand-year history. A history that is evident to visitors at every step in remnants of ages past. The once mighty kingdom of centuries past fell to conquering neighbors and ceased to exist. 200 years later, it was reborn through its rich tradition, culture, and citizens who loved freedom more than anything. Warsaw is the capital and center of modern Poland. This two million metropolis is a city of young and capable people as well as amazing beauty and dynamics. Its charm, unique history and historical relics attract hundreds of thousands of tourists from all over the world each year. One staple place to visit on Warsaw's tourist map is the Old Town with the Royal Castle a UNESCO site of national heritage, as well as other royal residences. One of them hosts the Warsaw University. The city's coat of arms is the mermaid, the beautiful and valiant half-woman, half-fish. Mam nadzieję, że docenicie Państwo zalety Warszawy, jej kreatywność, dynamizm, wielość i różnorodność szeroko dostępnej oferty kulturalnej. Serdecznie zapraszam. The University of Warsaw, one of the best Polish universities. The university was established in 1816 and originally consisted of five faculties. Law and Administration, Medicine, Philosophy, Theology, Sciences and Fine Arts. In those wars before the university was established, there was a school of knights in which Polish and American national hero Tadeusz Kościuszko used to study. Frederick Chopin, one of our greatest composers, graduated the university in 1829 and was in some sense its child, having lived here for an entire decade, from 1817 to 1827. Many eminent figures studied at the University of Warsaw, including prime ministers, presidents and five Nobel Prize laureates. History continues to be created here. The University of Warsaw hosts the world's most renowned visitors and students have the unique opportunity to be in the center of events. Today the University of Warsaw is the largest university in Poland providing world-class education to over 65,000 students in well-equipped laboratories under the supervision of eminent professors. 
Uniwersytet Warszawski jest nie tylko największą uczelnią w Polsce, ale również i najlepszą. I bardzo cieszymy się, że będziemy mogli gościć tak wielu znakomitych młodych programistów w przyszłym roku na wiosnę. Every year 8000 graduates receive their coveted diploma. It is they who are the University of Warsaw's greatest pride. And here, this is what we're looking at, uh, the teams, all 112 teams sitting there in, in rows. And it's actually in a gymnasium here at the Faculty of Management at the Warsaw University. Well, that is actually an empty contest floor, but you can see the spectators to the left, and uh, the teams are still waiting to enter. Frederick, let's talk a little bit more about what we think is going to happen today. Uh, when, how far into the contest can we expect a problem to be solved and uh, who do you think will be first? Well, I it's hard to tell, of course. Uh, it differs from year to year how hard the judges chooses to make the easiest problems. Okay? So, um, but I think we can expect to get the first problem in within, well, let's be on the safe side, within 5 or 25 minutes into the okay. contest. You know, 10 or 15 would be fairly typical. You can't really say that the, the few teams that will take the lead right on from the start are not necessarily going to be the winners uh, because there is, uh, there is speed and then there is being able to solve all the difficult problems too. So it can change towards the end, but definitely among these first 30 you will find the top. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the format of the contest. We're, we've said it's three-person teams, uh, yep. but they only have one computer. They only have one computer. So how do they, how do they plan work to make, make the most efficient use of that computer? W well, it, this differs from team to team, of course, but, but one important point is that you, you do want to use... There's only five hours, and you probably need to solve 10 problems to win, right? So you need one new problem solved every 30 minutes. You don't really have time to sit at the computer and do debugging and stuff. It's fairly common to try to do the debugging offline, so to speak. You do a printout, and you sit with pen and paper, and then try to find the error in the code w while one of your teammates is coding on the next problem. Unfortunately, there's, there's uh, no team here from, from our alma mater, the Royal Institute of Technology in, in Stockholm. Uh, this year, but do you have any other teams that, that are your personal favorites that you're rooting for? Well, I guess I, I, I root for the Finnish team from Aalto University. Because uh, it's close to Sweden. Be yeah, because it's close to Sweden and, you know, family, my family is part Finnish, so it makes sense for me to root for them. Uh, also, I think they're really good. And, uh, but it's their first time in the World Finals, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. But as you, uh, as you know, uh, I'm half Polish, so I have, to, uh, uh, I, uh, I have to confess that I'm actually rooting for the Polish teams, and especially, yeah. especially two of them, especially Warsaw, because I like it when the home team wins. It's a nice thing. Uh, and also, I, I, I'm definitely rooting for the Jagiellonian U University because I studied there 10 years ago. We're now seeing that the teams have started entering the floor. less than one minute to the start of the contest. And I'm guessing all the teams are sitting there with their hands as close to the envelope with the problem set as possible without actually touching it. Well, there's 12 more seconds to go and we now have the problem set in our hands. You can't open it yet though. Uh, seven Not touching seconds. anything. Exactly. Five, four, three, two, one. And the contest has started. Let's open our problem sets. Ah, there we go. Problem, the last problem is called, the last problem is called L. 12 so problems then. 12 problems. Okay. Fairly typical number. Yes. And I guess there's not much point of us go starting to go through these here because we'll not have time to understand them. Oh, you mean because we would solve them so quickly. Uh, of yes. course, that's yeah. what I mean. Okay, so the contest is up and running. Now, uh, Tell me, Frederick, uh, what are the first things that a team does now? 
once again, it depends. But fairly typically is that you have some kind of uh, template code that you want to get in, maybe a few scripts. Containing help things you. like? Basic code that includes you always use if you're using C++ and some framework for running through test cases and things like that. It's not a lot at all. You can type it in in a minute. But many teams will ignore that and just, you know, there's three problem sets here. So you pick one each and you start reading. Uh, I mean, it is important to find that easiest problem. What, if, what about the, the length of the problem statement? Is no, no, no. That has no relation at all. Uh, actually, it's, it's not uncommon for judges if they're feeling a little bit evil to, to take the easy problem and make it long so that it seems complicated. One of the contestants are sitting at the computer. He's logging in. Uh, and I'm assuming he will, you know, write some template code. That's why he's sitting there. Whereas his two colleagues are, are uh, reading. We got our first submission. It was Team 68. That's Tsinghua University. Yep. Uh, they tried problem D. That would be Fibonacci words. Uh, and failed due to wrong answer. So that's 11 minutes into the contest we had the first submission. Yes. And we're seeing them now on screen. Tsinghua. And what we can see also is that they have been working... Oh! There's a solution. Team 62, I believe that is Stanford. Yes, Stanford have solved problem B. Ah, that makes more sense. Which we also said was likely to be one of the easiest problems. Yeah, the analyst also said that problem K is also among the easiest. So K is probably going to be the next one. So we got Stanford at the very top. The uh, only ones to have solved a problem so far. And Moscow also had a submission, apparently. Uh, another, one, another one on problem B, this time Moscow State. That, that was a solution, sorry. Moscow State solved problem B. So another solution, 61, that's Warsaw, or is it St. Petersburg? St. Petersburg State University IT Mechanics and Optics solves problem B. So within three minutes, we have had three solutions to problem B. Uh, and I think we can safely say that that seems to have been the right problem to start with. Now I get to eat what I said earlier. Tsinghua is the first team to solve problem D. They solved problem D. They did? Yes. So after making some kind of mistake, they took seven minutes, found it, fixed it, and now got problem D correct. We're guessing that B and D will be the first problems to be solved. Then C, E, and L are believed to be in the next tier, yes. uh, sorted by difficulty. But now that these teams that have been working on B, they see that other teams have solved D, uh, so it's likely that they'll, they'll start to work on that one. So uh, you're going to explain some of the problems and their solutions? Yeah, so for this first session, we picked the three problems with the most solutions or solution attempts. Uh, I will start with problem D, which is the problem I would start with as a contestant, simply because it's the problem that screams, I am a standard problem, and if you, if you spend time on me, you will solve me. So <laughs> let's, expl <laughs> let's explain what this problem asks. Uh, we are constructing a sequence of strings called uh, Fibonacci words. This is uh, constructed in a very similar way to Fibonacci numbers. Uh, you just take two of the strings and you concatenate them to get the next one. So after 101, we will get 10110, this string. And then afterwards, we take the next one, we append it, and so on. So we get a bunch of strings that are growing really, really fast. The only interesting part is handling the occurrences that are on the boundary of two words. Now, what happens with the words, the Fibonacci words, they are growing really, really quickly. And immediately, if you, if you reach like a Fibonacci word of 30 or 40, 50, then they will certainly be way longer than the query string you can get. So from this point on, the answer for the boundary will only depend on the, on the parity of the, of the number of the Fibonacci word, because the only thing that matters is whether the word ends with a zero, or with the one, the, the left side and the right side are uniquely determined. So what we can do for the boundary, we can just generate the first few Fibonacci words, and then for each of them, use a string matching algorithm, for instance, Knuth-Morris-Pratt, 
to find all the locations of the query on the overlap, and then for the longer queries, we can answer these in constant time. Okay, so then we continue with problem B, um, curvy little bottles. Uh, so this is currently, I think, the most solved problem with about half of the contestants uh, having solved this problem. Um, so the, the problem is kind of, well, there's a graphical image here. You get a description of a, a bottle, um, and the description is given by the radius of the bottle as a function of its height. So the height is along this, this x-axis. Um, so the first thing we have to calculate is the total volume of the bottle. And we're giving the, given the, the, uh, the lower point of the bottle, we're giving the uh, upper um, um, uh, x, x point of the bottle. So we have to calculate that volume, which is an integral um, of, well, the horizontal slice is, is just r times, uh, well, pi times r squared. So that's a function of x. And we have to integrate that over uh, the x-axis to get the total volume uh, from, the, from the bottom par, uh, point to the uh, uh, top point of the bottle. The function is a polynomial, so we can actually also, its, it's square will also be a, a polynomial, so we can actually analytically express that and express the integral. On the other hand, it's way more simple to just do a numerical integration um, and just, well, um, numerically by with sm small step size do the integration and find the total volume. Well, that's the first part of the, uh, of the problem. The second part is to find positions, ticks, ticks, tick positions on the bottle, which um, every tick should be, have a, a constant extra amount of volume that it indicates that if you fill up to that tick, you have like a certain, well, say 100 milliliters of, of volume there. So you have to find the positions of these tick marks that indicate these, these uh, well, increasing uh, levels of, vol of, 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 of volume filled. So, well, this is a fairly easy problem if you know, if you see that you do have to take this, this binary search approach and do the numerical integration. Thank you very much for explaining the three easiest problems for us. You're welcome. Welcome, Bill Poucher, Executive Director of the ICPC. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, June. I'm delighted to be here. Could you tell us uh, a little bit more about your role? What is it you actually do as Executive Director? Wow. That's a really good question. I'm not quite sure exactly. <laughs> um, I think uh, what I do is welcome everybody to the ACM International Collegiate Programming Contest and rely on the most gifted people with good nature in the world uh, to put on a great competition. Uh, there are 2,219 universities worldwide and they compete in the fourth quarter of the year uh, for the privilege of advancing to the world finals. So we had 25,000 of the best students in the world competing in the regionals at 350 sites uh, on six continents. And, uh, it's quite amazing. Yeah, it really is. And they all did very, very well. And uh, it's very hard to select the 112 teams of, t of uh, three for the world finals, but we did that. Um, I could go on and on and on, but uh, it's, uh, it's a great group of people who make a huge difference. And then every year there's a great host. What the University of Warsaw has done to open the arms and hearts of Poland and Warsaw to all the contestants has been amazing. Uh, Bill, it's, it's great to have you here, and I know the, the entire ICPC community is very, very thankful for all the work that you've done. Well, uh, June, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I don't actually do any work. I just play hard <laughs> with the coolest folks in the world who, when they play hard at the end of the game, the world's a better place because they've created uh, a composition uh, that will help other people solve problems. And that's what information technology does. It lets composers create and extend the life and capability of people around them. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, June. We uh, shortly saw Moscow Institute of Physical and Technology leaping into the lead. Uh, after that, uh, St. Petersburg ITMO jumped back in the lead. Um, they were working on I, and then they switched to F, but then they solved I. So I, mean, I don't know exactly what's going on there, but they're back in the lead. Welcome back to the studio. I now have with me Bernie Meyerson, who's Vice President of Innovation at IBM. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Could you please 
tell us a little bit about what, what is it that makes the ICPC interesting for IBM? First and foremost, the students that you've brought here, the students that have won their local contests, the students that have basically now made it to the finals, these are the best and brightest in the world. If you want to be a leader, you need to hire leaders. And these folks are the leaders of tomorrow. You know, they're students today, five years from now, they'll be setting the pace for this entire industry. And I want to be absolutely sure we do everything we possibly can to support them in that end goal, and hopefully to attract the best and the brightest to join the IBM Corporation. Uh, could you tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about your job as VP of Innovation? What does that mean? It means move the needle. You know, uh, what makes IBM a remarkable entity is we can tackle problems that are global in scale. You know, we have 170 countries roughly, we have about 440,000 people on board, and we can literally tackle issues that will change the world. You can actually use information technology to reinvent transportation in a city, to build safer cities in terms of predicting weather within literally a matter of one or two square kilometers, thereby eliminating the issue of perhaps flooding that surprises you, knowing in advance it'll happen, getting people out of the way. These are deep information technology problems. The future of big data, again, changing the world. And I heard yesterday that this year you were actually guaranteeing employment at IBM for the gold medalists. If a gold medalist is actually, you know, comes to that level, absolutely. Basically, if they are authorized to work in a geography, and they just need to ask. A question that, of course, will be difficult to answer because there's so much to choose from, but what would you say are some of the coolest things that IBM is working on right now? Oh, unquestionably, if you just use the cool factor, yeah. the fact that I had to spend $50,000 on pizza just to support all the people who showed up to watch the Watson machine beat the prior ah. two Jeopardy champions. You know, you have any idea how much pizza you can buy for $50,000? <laughs> Needless to say, that is a cool factor, and the students just went nuts. What's the best thing about this event? What's the best thing about the people here? The students, uh, the, the intellect that they bring here, the enthusiasm, the teamwork. It is one of the great challenges is among a very brilliant set of people getting them to work as a team. A team will always beat an individual. I don't care how smart you think you are, you don't know everything. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the important things is discovering that, wow, you know, we can compete. And by the way, when we get all done competing, we're still friends. And once again, uh, an enormous thanks for the, all the support from IBM over these past 15 years and hopefully for many years to come. You know, look, from our perspective, thank you very much for having a fantastic conference. And, basically bringing all these students together to compete, because if you look at the labs behind you, guess who we're counting on to uh, fill those labs? So <laughs> it works both ways. We'll do our best not to disappoint you. Excellent, thanks. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. And so what problems are you going to explain for us? We will be starting by problem C. C. Bus tour. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, in this problem, uh, we're... Um, we have a headquarters where we're uh, starting a bus tour for some tourists, maybe in Warsaw, and we have to pick them up at their hotels. And then we have to go, so we have a headquarters and a bunch of hotels and a destination. We don't want to have the case that maybe if we live in this hotel, we're picked up first, so we have to go see all the hotels and then go to the destination. And then we, when we go back, we just reverse the tour, so we have to see all the hotels again. That's not why we're taking the tour, right? We want to go to the destination. The hotels that are in the first half, uh, on the way to the destination, have to be in the second half visited on the way back. A solution to this, okay, so this is, uh, at first, this is just a traveling salesperson problem, uh, but with a twist. This, uh, that we have to be a bit fair to the persons in the hotel. So um, there is a dynamic programming algorithm for doing traveling salesperson, and if you take this twist into account, you can solve the problem. And the next problem we will discuss is uh, problem I. Uh, problem I is about uh, a big safe. I depict it here with a square. And there's a laser light coming in, in on the upper left corner. There are some uh, mirrors in the safe. There are slashes or backslashes, and the laser light bounces off that. And there is the safe opens if the laser light um, goes out on the lower left, uh, lower right corner. And uh, if it does not, then it doesn't open. So for this case, the light would go like this. 
it exits here, so it opens. For this save, it does not. For you go like this, this, and come out here. And the, the, question, the question now is, is it possible to make this safe open by just inserting one extra mirror? So in this case, well, this is just this safe with one mirror left out. So if you insert this mirror over here, then, then it opens. So in this case, it would be yes. And if you can do it, you should also say uh, on how many different positions you can insert one mirror. Well, the a way to, to see whether this is possible is just to, to trace the light from the starting, like this, but also do it for the, from the end. So here you basically invert this path. And you can easily show that where these paths intersect, those are the places where you can insert a mirror, and then it will open. And if these paths do not intersect at all, it's impossible to do it with uh, just inserting one mirror. Well, that's, that's the first half of the problem. Uh, the second half is count the amount of positions where you can insert this mirror. And well, what you basically need is uh, some data structure, a range tree. And well, suppose you want to uh, find all intersections between the horizontal pieces of one path and the vertical pieces of one path. Then you, you actually scan through all horizontal pieces and uh, insert in the tree, or do the other way, and insert in the tree all the vertical places, uh, pieces, and then in the tree you can quickly look up how many intersections you have now. So it's a hard problem and the team seems to have recognized it's a hard problem. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's also been served within the first half of the contest and within the first half of problem solved. There yeah. are a couple of problems we have no submissions for at all, which are even harder. Yes. Which shows that, well, the world finals problems live up to the standard of being really hard. Very good. Okay, thank you very much for coming here and explaining three more problems. We've seen that uh, that St. Petersburg State University of IT Mechanics and Optics are alone with six solved problems in first place. And the first one to solve problem F. That's also correct. They've now solved B, C, D, E, I, and K. And we can see that trailing them with five solved problems are four teams, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, University of Tokyo, Moscow State University, and the home team, University of Warsaw. St. Petersburg seem to be working on E now, which, which could be a good idea, uh, given that it is a problem that has been solved by four teams. Uh, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology appear to be working on problem F. Moscow State seem to not have started editing anything else. So they, they are also at this point where, where Tokyo was previously, where everything they have been working on has been solved. Also, if you look at the uh, these teams on, fa on five solved problems, um, I think that Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology are in the best position. Um, I mean, first off, they do have the best time, even though the difference is not really that significant. But they're lacking problem C, which is possibly the easiest of C, E, and I, and L, which are the, the problems that these teams have been solving, but not all of them. Now, things are happening. Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology have solved their sixth problem. Uh huh. So they are clearly in second place now. That was prob it was, they solved problem F. Very good. We still got three Russian teams and gold medals. Yeah. So th there really is a Russian dominance at the top here. And then they and also have a Warsaw one silver and one bronze. In fifth place. They need to start working if they want to win uh, on home turf. Our next guest, John Clevenger, who's uh, director of systems or sysops team lead. The titles That's keep changing. Idea. John, could you, uh, could you tell us what is it that you do here? I'm responsible for the computers that the teams use, uh, that, the, that the judges, uh, uh, um, Joe was just talking about, um, so putting the problems in, um, and for the network infrastructure uh, that connects them all together, uh, in all of the um, computers that are running the uh, CADIS contest control system, um, my team puts all of those computers together in a, uh, in a network, uh, ensures that all of the functions that the team needs to be able to perform. The objective is to develop a test plan uh, early on. We work uh, on an almost year-round cycle. We start from the uh, 
it, it, as soon as One World Finals finishes, we're already planning for the next one. Uh, and those include dealing with problems, if there are problems. So in that sense, you could say everything has gone according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> but those, those problems have included power failures? Oh, yes. Leakage? Uh, uh, we water had leakage? To, 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 uh, you, you want to talk about these? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, well, let me say first, uh, up front, the uh, host University of Warsaw has done a marvelous job of providing a facility here. Um, but having said that, we, we put some serious um, pressure on their systems. And yes, we had, um, when we started a week ago, there were um, a number of power problems that we had. We, we draw a lot of uh, power. So uh, they put in some special new circuits uh, just to handle this. And there were a couple of glitches in getting those going, but they they got them going. They and then and as I say, uh, when the problem occurred, they were right there. They they had an electrician on the spot, uh, and he stayed until that problem was fixed. Um, and we haven't had a problem. We haven't we haven't thrown a circuit breaker in three days. Thank you for for your hard work, and thank you for coming here to the studio. Well, thank you for having me. We're here talking to contestants from schools who've done well here at the competition in the past three years about what they're doing to prepare for the competition and what their expectations are. Uh, we are from St. Petersburg State University. Shanghai Zhejiang University, China. MIT. From Moscow State University. St. Petersburg State University of ITMO. Zhejiang University. National Taiwan University. Warsaw University. I'm from Tsinghua University. We are from Russia, Saratov. What did you guys do to prepare for this competition? Uh, we just spent a lot of time practicing every weekend almost. Writing code every day. We were reading some uh, theory and uh, learning algorithms. We wrote from two contests per week or more, two team and uh, lots of personal contests. Are you nervous at all? Uh, oh, well, a little bit, but uh, I think it's fine. You guys, your university has done great in the past. How do you feel uh, as far as pressure goes to do well again? Um, it's a great responsibility for us, so we must do our best to do what people are waiting from us. Because of the uh, specific history that we performed in the past years, we should do uh, great things. We will try to do our best to take a high place in the competition. It's our second uh, visit to the World Finals, uh, so we want to show our best and to uh, show the b better result. As you guys are hosting this competition, do you feel like you're under pressure because you are representing the University of Warsaw? No, I think that we are under much uh, lower pr pressure than other teams because we are here, we are at home, and the others are not. <laughs> Welcome back to ICPC Live, bringing you the world finals of the 36th annual ACM International Collegiate Programming Contest sponsored by IBM and hosted by the University of Warsaw. And Frederick, we have some very interesting developments on the scoreboard. Absolutely. The aforementioned University of Warsaw have solved problem G after changing an I <laughs> into a J. Here they are on the webcam. Well, sure seem happy. <laughs> <laughs> Problem G. Here you can see the diff. This is all they needed to change. So, so you can see the, the red and the green line. That's, that's all they needed to change. They were looping over using the wrong looping variable. Very soon, we will stop getting this kind of information at all. Because, Frederick, what happens in just one or two minutes? In two minutes and 16 seconds, uh, we will no longer get any judgments. So we will not know if it's incorrect or correct. We will see how much they submit. And the teams will know if it's correct or not. And uh, you, we might be able to infer something from, from looking at their patterns of submissions. Say if they, yeah. if they do three submissions to A and then they go over to another, that might mean that they solved it. Still, it might mean they didn't and just gave up. So we don't really know. 
Okay, what are you going to show us? And the one we will start with is a problem G. What we have is a junk, uh, is a network of pipes, which are these lines. And so, uh, well, in the network, there are some junctions. Uh, for simplicity, they are drawn as circles, but you can imagine them really small. And what we want to do is we want to start, we have a large body of water somewhere, and we want to push this water into the start node, and we want it to reach the end node. There are two possible obstacles. One of them is we have to push the water with a uh, high enough pressure for it to reach the required altitude. And the other obstacle is that some of those junctions contain holes. So you cannot simply start pushing water into this network because what would happen? The water would leak through the holes. We can start by trying all possibilities for the water pressure. And now, once we have fixed the water pressure, we can forget every, everything about this level. And what we will get is a set of connected components of the graph. And uh, we are starting in one of them. We want to bring the water to another one, or maybe the same one. And it turns out that this then uh, produces a shortest path problem, or the problem to find the cheapest way of reaching the node end from the node start in this network, where traveling within a component is for free. And when, uh, when you are traveling to a new component, you have to pay for the pipe to the new component and also to plug all the holes except for two in the new component. Now, what we can see on the scoreboard is that both the, the two teams in the lead, St. Petersburg and Warsaw, have both submitted for new problems. Uh, St. Petersburg have submitted for L and Warsaw have submitted for A. And of course what this means is if St. Petersburg's solution is correct, then they are guaranteed to still be in the lead regardless of what happened with Warsaw. We actually have ITMO here on the... On the webcam. On the webcam. We don't know what they're working on right now. Um, well, if their L is incorrect, I assume they're still working on L. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise it seems well, A has correct solutions. <laughs> then we get the third place, we get Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, and they are they're missing G and I. But they, their, their third place is very secure right now. Uh, yes, because that is true. At, at worst, from their perspective, uh, Waterloo and Shanghai Jiao Tong have been, uh, got their submissions accepted, uh, but they will still have much worse time, so they will be behind. And interestingly enough, this is fourth to seventh place, so there's yep. one gold in there. Yeah. So, so you know, e even if you can't beat Moscow, you know, try to beat Waterloo is currently on the gold medal. Yeah. So the others really want to try to get yeah, that but one. Yeah, they, they want to secure it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there will definitely be submissions by all those teams with six correct. So six correct will not be enough for a gold medal, I would say. No, that, that's, a, that's a good guess. That's a very good guess. We, oh, I interesting, a little bit further down here, if you look, we have National Taiwan University, and they have submitted on three different problems. Yeah, uh, well. You know, that, that could mean that they got two of them, you know, or, or yeah. three. So they, or they National they, Taiwan could be up on third place yeah. right now. Yeah, potentially. Possibly, well. Possibly. Or, or it, it, I don't think it's really, I don't expect them to work on three different problems simultaneously, but I think it's a fair assumption that one of the three is correct. The further down we go, the more submissions there are. So uh, this can get a bit hairy. Is, is this a question of the teams that haven't solved very much just desperately trying, whereas the ones that have solved a lot know exactly what they're wo working on and are very focused? I think it's more a case of the ones that solved a lot only have the really hard ones left. Yeah. Yes, and I think, for example, um, the teams on the top, uh, J, I mean, for them, they just they may, they do, there's no sense in trying J because it's obviously more, uh, way harder than any of the other problems. So for them, there's very little choice in, in, in what problems they want to work on. While the lower ranking teams, they have lots of problems to choose from. And they, can, they may just try a strategy of just see what, whatever problem we can try and, and just try it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a big difference and well accounts for the, maybe partly for this, this, this what we see. There's only two teams in the top that hasn't been submitting anything last hour. It's Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology and Harvard. So.
So, and Harvard is not in a very safe place at all. No, I mean, they're no, currently no. on the silver and... They could it, easily drop down to bronze. Easily. If, yeah. And know, may, maybe even out of top 12. So, uh, what we've seen, there's still still no pr pending submission from Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. Uh, Shanghai Tong now has two different problems they're submitting on. It could bring them up to eight. Um, they still would have a worse time, I think. You know, they're a pretty good time right now. Yeah, yeah, they, st they still probably will be... Can you calculate that? Is it possible for them to beat Warsaw with two submissions? Uh, it is... Uh, no, it's not possible. Right. Uh, Shanghai Zhao Tong, even if they've solved both, they would still be after Warsaw. Now, Moscow made one submission on I. And that's the first submission. And what's the current time? It's four hours, 50 minutes in. It's Well, it's almost it's 300. So 290 minutes. That, that would bring them to 1110 that means versus that 1176 for Warsaw. It's possible that Moscow passes Warsaw now. Uh, but that means the way it looks now, unless Warsaw have a correct one for A, or no, they, Warsaw must have a correct one for A, and they must get one in for F as well. To, to beat St. Petersburg if we are correct in guessing that St. Petersburg have L correct. There will be 12 medals, four gold, four silver, four bronze. And that is the default, that is the expected. But according to the rules, that is not necessarily true. The rules allow for additional bronze medals in the case that a team is very close to a bronze medal. Warsaw has submitted once again on A. <laughs> it's not a good sign for them. Though, on the other sign. hand, so has Moscow. Yeah, but sure, but so, and you know, if they get one more, they could probably beat Warsaw. No, uh, actually, all, all, of them all three eating. of them are eating. That... That's, uh, is that a good sign? I guess that's a good sign. I, I think my, my interpretation would be that they've decided that there is nothing more they can do. Yep. And now, for the final two minutes of the competition, we're joined in the studio by Professor Jan Made, who is World Finals Director and coach of the Warsaw team. Welcome. How do you feel about your team's performance? Well, it looks like we will have a gold medal. Uh, the chances to win are very narrow now. We, it would be a miracle if they solve problem well, actually. F. That's only that's needed is that they solved A and yeah. that St. Petersburg didn't solve L. That's all I, you need. No, but I believe, no, I, I think I know the answer because we could see the performance of the teams. They shouted with joy St. Ah. Petersburg and then Warsaw shouted with joy some time ago. So I believe that both teams have got a positive answer. That's my belief. Yeah. So having the same number of problems were losing with St. Petersburg. However, they just there submitted is a submission. On problem F. Oh. That, and that was the only hope I had. Yes. <laughs> they submitted <laughs> on problem F. And it's one and minute, 30 seconds left. And moreover, they work very hard on it. They're still working. They're still working on something. So they probably didn't get F. One. The contest is indeed over. The results are finalized. Yep. There was no errors found from judges, sysops, or caddies. So we're just waiting to get to the actual results. There's some something that's think. that's not entirely normal. Uh, we can say that the contest is over, uh, the results have been finalized, we are waiting for a go-ahead uh, from John Clavenger, the leader of the SysOps team. Uh, ch well, I s we certainly didn't win. Um, I'm hoping we did pretty well, uh, maybe top 20 or so. Oh, I think that uh, my team do uh, their best to prepare very well for this contest. 
and I know that they were working very hard during the last half of the year. I think the problems were pretty nice, but really hard also. Um, compared to previous years, um, it's about what I expected. Uh, I think today's task is uh, very tough and difficult to solve. Uh, and we just finally solved four of them. So it's not too much. We're almost, we've said here, we almost dare say that, that uh, Warsaw and uh, St. Petersburg uh, IT Mechanics and Optics will get a gold. That's the way it looks now, but hey, we don't even know that. Uh, folks, let me just tell you what happens. We have this great big checklist we go through to make sure that everything is right. And if we see a little anomaly, our group is going to take a very close look at what needs to be done. And uh, we'll go through the whole checklist again. You see, until, and then they have to actually wait a little bit, right? Because we want it absolutely right. So we'll be back in just a minute. It was a caching error between data that was provided to ICPC Live and the data that was then provided to the resolver. So all we had to do was start the resolver at the right place in the event queue and it worked flawlessly. So, are we ready to see what the results are of the uh, 36th annual ACM International Collegiate Programming Contest World Finals sponsored by IBM and hosted by the University of Warsaw? Oh yeah. Let's do it. Whenever a problem is accepted, it will just run up towards the top. And if there are any more pending remaining, we will take care of them later and you might run up even further. Same so with Fusu University with 11 on E really tried to get to this one and in the end they succeeded ah, we got the University of British Columbia work. with two pending second one is moving them up next one is Wuhan University with two pending and the second one is moving them up we got the University of Rock Club again moving up Carnegie Mellon with two pending first one is moving them but International Institute of Information Technology Hyderabad two pending second one moves them up we got Charles University Prague two pending but no they're staying 20th place, we've got Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, they're staying. And we have the top 20. We've got National Taiwan University, three pending, first no, second no, third no. we got Zhongshan University, two pending. And they're moving up in Italy, they have one more remaining, we've got Nisu Novogorod, they're staying. Moscow State, two pending. And first one is accepted, they have one more for later. University of Tokyo with three pending and the first one is moving up. We got Kazakh British Technical University, oh no. We got Chinese University of Hong Kong with one more pending and, and they're, they're moving going up. up. But Stanford again, one more pending. But no, they're staying in 14th place. We're very close to the medals now. Saratov State University, one more pending, but no. We got the first medalist, Songjuan University, then one more pending, then can get more than the bronze. And they yes. will get more, maybe. So we got the Belarus State University of Informatics and Radio Electronics. Congratulations to the Belarus State University of Informatics and Radio Electronics. We got the Belarus State University now with one pending. They could possibly move away from this bronze. And they are, so next one is Harvard University. Four submissions to Problem I. Did they get it in the end? They did! So we got the University of Tokyo who already moved up at least once and they have two more pendings. First of eight, but no, they didn't get 12 submissions to I. Did they get it in the end? They no. did not, but they did get a bronze medal. The second bronze medal of today, the University of Tokyo. Congratulations, University of Tokyo. <laughs> Moving on to Moscow State University, one pending on I. Only three submissions, but they didn't get it. They get the Third bronze medal though, congratulations to the Moscow State University bronze medalist at the World Finals. We've got Shanghai Guangdong University with two pendings, which could bring them up to eight, which is a gold medal. 
So there's two more pending. Let's see for F. No, they can still get to the silver. And they are moving up. At they least are at in the University right of Waterloo. They're actually, they have one more pending. And they too take the bronze medal. Congratulations to the University of Waterloo for claiming the last bronze medal. Next one and the first team with seven solved problems and the first silver medalist will be the Chinese University of Hong Kong. If they have no more pending. Silver to Chinese University of Hong Kong. Very nice that we got a problem between bronze and silver like that. Next yeah. one is Harvard University. They're all, all also finished and they will get the second silver medal of today. Silver to Harvard University. The third silver medal will go to Shangshan University. Only eight in minutes before Harvard. Very close there. But, but they both get silver. It's silver to both, so we're fine. Uh, and the last silver medal will go to Belarusian State University. Seven problems in 1288 minutes. Some 100 minutes behind the goals. That's not very far. No. In relation to Belarusian State University. Now we got the first gold medalist, the Shanghai Gai Tong University. They have no more pending, so they will get the gold. Gold medal to Shanghai Yao Tong University. And big apologies for my pronunciation. We have a gold medal. Uh, next, we have Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. The guys we saw previously being very happy. Let's see if we can make them happy again. They have one more pending, and getting that one would move them into second place, I think? It probably would. Well, let's see. They yes. did get it, so Moscow Institute of physics and technology are probably very happy again. We know they can be. Now, we got University of Warsaw, and they got two pending ones. Five submissions for A and one for F that we know came in in the last possible second. And their coach believes that maybe, maybe it will be enough. Now, if they have A, they will be in a very good place. Maybe they got both. So let's see. Did they get the A? They yes. did get the A, and they're moving up in the first place. So we currently got Poland. And the University of Warsaw in first place, but first, in third place, we've got the very happy guys from the Moscow Institute of Physical Technology, and they have all the reasons to be happy, because they're finished behind two very, very good teams in third place, and giving them a gold medal. Gold medal to Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. Now, in second place, the St. Petersburg State University of IT Mechanics and Optics, ITMO, and we know that if they get this one, they will get into the lead. But then, if University of Warsaw gets theirs, they will move back. So this is are two more pending runs in the entire contest, and it will, it will decide everything. If they miss this one, then it's all done. But if they get this one, Warsaw still have a chance to come back and retake the championship. So let's see what Itmo can do with L. I think they got it. I think they got it. Yeah, me too. They did Thank get you. it. So we got St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics currently in the lead, but there's still one pending submission. And we know that uh, this submission came in with about 30 si seconds. 30 seconds or so from the end. So this was 30 seconds before the end. Had we ended just 30 seconds earlier, St. Petersburg would have won, definitely. But we didn't. So let's see, University of Warsaw, did you get your submission F in the last possible submission? Will you claim the championship? No. no. Still, University of Warsaw, the home team, very well deserved gold medal in second place. Congratulations to the University of Warsaw. Big congratulations, it was very well played. Very nice of you to not take the championship on your home turf. Very well done. And the world champions, once again, as always, it's the St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics. This time, though, it was very close, but big congratulations to St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics for once again being the ICPC World Champions. And once again, being the best team. But they really got to run for the money this time, don't, wouldn't you say, John? Oh, absolutely. By Warsaw University. And it, it was, was up until the very, very end.
Ferry and the last pending submission and you know possibly one of the last actual submissions as well yeah and had they got that one they would have they would have had it yep so just a great thank you all uh, thank you so much for for uh, joining us today and being with us and uh, we hope you enjoyed this as much as we did thank you everybody uh, this is most of the team and, and uh, goodbye, goodbye. See you in 2013. <laughs>